in the previous video, I talked about my experience of studying MOT in the first semester here at NYU, which is management of technology. But today I have my flatmate Gautam, and he's going to talk about his experience of studying masters in computer engineering, which is MSc here at NYU. So please introduce yourself. He's also been in the video of like the on-campus jobs, which you must have seen before. So like, yeah, you can again introduce yourself. Yeah. So hi everyone, I think uh, most of you already know me, but my name is Gautam over here, and I'm pursuing my major in Computer Engineering here at NYU. Yeah. And I began my program at the same time as Sohan began it, that is for 2024. Yeah. And yeah, that's pretty much about me. Got it. So like, we are going to talk about his experience in of like MSCE, the courses that he took, the projects that he worked on, the importance of these projects like in the real world, uh, the things that he wish he could have done before coming here, the things that he did right before coming here, all of those things I think will going to uh, is are like going to be helpful for a lot of students who are coming here in the fall 2025 intake. However, if you are someone who are, who is like watching this video in 2026, 27, I think these videos are still going to be helpful just like the other videos that I've created on my channel. Super fundamentally talking about our experience and stuff. So talking about his experience now, first of all, tell us about course selection at MSCE. Right. So course selection is one of like, it's like the first stone where you understand, okay, that you are out of your comfort zone, I, I would say. <laughs> okay. Because like over here at NYU, you are given a specific date and a specific time yeah. to select the poster that you want for the upcoming semester. So right. for example, our fall semester began in September, but I believe we registered for the courses June, June or July, July, something. July, yeah, yeah June, June, or June or July, something. Yeah. Yeah. We don't remember the exact date. Yeah. But somewhere, so you act, so basically you register for the courses that you want two months prior to your course start date. Yeah. And you have to be proactive or you have to research yourself very well as to which courses do you want. Exactly. By which professor do you want those courses and when do you want those courses? So like, yeah. for example, you know, if you say that there can be a course which is taught by multiple professors over here. Yeah. So you need to know that, okay, I want this course taught by this professor at this date, at this time. Yeah, exactly. And you need to, you know, add all these courses in your shopping cart and you must need to be proactive whenever you're uh, registering and enrolling for these courses because the courses get full, like, 20 seconds as soon as the course session slots begins. open. Yeah. yeah. As soon as the slots open, they get full in 20 seconds and I'm not capping. Yeah. No, I'm really not capping. Yeah. So you need to be proactive when it comes to, you know, course registration. And that is like the first step. If you pass that step, you know, it's good for you, perfect for you. Well, that's the first step that you need to do. That is, you know, select your courses well, uh, research the course well, research the professors well. Yeah. And yeah, that is the first step that you think I'd say. Yeah, I think I have something to add over here. So I think one of the things that you can do is again talk to the seniors. Yeah. You can connect with him, you can connect with me, MOT, MSCE, whatever you feel is right. And then talk to these people about the courses that you really want to take. The second thing is like go through the professor's, you know, dashboard in the website right. and then see what the, has their research work been, what has their experience been, uh, you know, all of that stuff and really see what aligns with you. Because like he said, like for example, if you're learning, let's say design strategy, so like one professor will bring in an experience in health tech, some professor will bring, bring in an experience in media tech. So like okay. what really aligns with you and what really, uh, you know, you want to learn on, and from who, from, from like what professor also does really help. So like researching all of that, connecting with seniors is I think the first thing. And uh, yeah, now tell us about the courses that you actually took or you got, like right. what was the scene? So the good thing was for me was that I got the courses that I wished for. Okay. So the first step was pretty much done in a good way. So the yeah. courses that I registered for in my first semester, the fall 2024 semester were machine learning, okay. database systems, and computing systems architecture. So these were okay. the three courses that I enrolled for. So just to give you a little overview of the, you know, how the degree <coughs> of complete engineering is yeah. spread. So it's a 30 credit program as opposed to MOT, which is I believe a 36, 36 credit credit program. Yeah. So it's a 30 credit program. So basically you take 10 courses, 10 courses to finish up your degree. There are, there is like a set of core courses that you need to take when yeah. you're pursuing this program. So like you are, uh, as of fall 2024, you are given uh, five courses and out of those five courses, you can choose any two courses and then you finish up your core requirements. Okay. After that, you can choose electives as mm -hmm. and how you want. So like that is like the main requirement or the main right. purpose or yeah. like the basic gist of, you know, how yeah. this program works. You can find all these details on the website of NYU. Like you can, if you, even if you just Google, say NYU Masters in Computer Engineering science, yeah, or Computer science. science, you can just uh, yeah. uh, take a look at all these things. Exactly. They are very public to everyone. Totally. So yeah, so these are three courses that I took during my <coughs> fall semester. And yeah, I would say all those three courses were pretty much good. You know, they did uh, help me learn a lot of stuff. You know, they helped me build my projects. They helped me learn in detail about these courses because I yeah. took these courses. So I have to, take, I have to uh, just explain. I did take machine learning and database systems. So these two courses, I have already completed those in my undergrad. Yeah. However, learning back in India and learning these courses again in, uh, over here in the States, 
I actually there are two completely different things. I mean, back in India, I learned more about the theoretical perspective of these courses. Yeah. Over here, I learned more about the practical aspect of these courses. So right. yeah, I think that's yeah. it. All these three courses, all the professors, I think they were pretty much they were pretty learned, and I did learn loads of stuff regarding it. It from these courses. So like out of these, how many of them are core subjects? So one of these were core subjects. The computing systems architecture course mm -hmm. uh, was a core is subject. A core requirement. Yeah, okay. it's a core requirement. So as I said, we need two core requirements. So this yeah. is the first core requirement which I completed in my fall semester. Yeah. And I'm completing the second core requirement now in my spring semester. Yeah. But do you think like it's a good idea to take a core subject if you don't have any idea? Because for MOD, I think it's a good idea because if you don't know like what exactly to take, um, and then instead of wasting your elective in pursuing something that you are not sure if you want or no, I think just taking a core course in I think economics or finance does really help. Is it the same case with you? I think I would say finish off your core courses as early as you can yeah. because I mean that is like the main requirement for you to complete your degree. degree. Exactly. So I would say that try to finish off your core courses in the yep. first year itself and then you can have that breathing space to take electives exactly. or explore the field as much as you want. And I think by the time you're uh, you know about to choose your elective in second or third sem, I think you're also aware of uh, you know, the things or the courses Definitely. that you can basically take to like yeah. sort of get an industry experience and all of Definitely. that stuff. I think it's the same with MOT as well, same with MSCE. So like just one question in between, like what's the difference between courses in MSCE and MSCS? Right. So difference? NYU offers you two degrees, <coughs> that is the Masters in Computer Science and Masters in Computer Engineering. Yeah. Broadly, both of these degrees are pretty much the same. Yeah. It's just that in MSCE, yeah. you have to complete the core requirements, which consists of a wide uh, variety of subjects. That is, it can be ranged from hardware and software. Got it. In computer science, it's mostly related to the software domain. So right. essentially, in computer engineering, you can see courses like, say, digital signal processing, say, yeah. embedded systems, you know, the hardware side of these things. Yeah. In computer science, it's mostly related to the software side. That is like the main core require or the main core difference between the both of these courses. Other than that, I think many of the courses do overlap. Got it. And I think it's pretty much the same overall. Yeah. Are you planning to take any hardware course? I did. So uh, computer systems architecture was one hardware course, mm -hmm. which was a core requirement. Yeah. And real time <coughs> computer systems is another, uh, you know, a Are core course, which I'm currently pursuing. Currently yeah. Got it. Got it. So, I'm, uh, so I finished those two hardware courses. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think it's, it's good to learn all these courses, I would say, you yeah. know, because I did get to learn uh, loads of stuff from both of these courses, yeah. as well as from the professors who were like, as I say, both of the professors for both of these courses, you know, have some industry exposure. I think one of them is a CEO of a company too. So I think, you know, he gets some, <laughs> so he gets some, uh, you know, exposure. He gets yeah. some yeah. information, totally. which is like completely from a different perspective. And I think yeah. it does help you a lot. Yeah, absolutely. I think this is the difference between the way you have your education in India and the way you have it over here. So like, here, what you have is like you have a bunch of professors which are named as adjuncts. So like adjuncts are the ones who have an industry experience. They are currently working in the industry and then they are also teaching here alongside. So like one of the professors that we had for our course is like a startup founder and an investor and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then he also teaches in the class. So like you can imagine the kind of exposure that he brings into the class and you know, just as students, like we get to learn a lot. But coming back to CE again, so like tell us about the relevance of the projects that you worked on. Um, you know, uh, and how like relevant to basically the real world and like how do they help you in finding internships and jobs? We'll we come to that. But I think one of the points that I also sort of wanted to add, which I literally just forgot about right now, I don't know why, but you can talk. <laughs> right. So I'd say that the marking scheme or the grading scale for these courses is completely different from yeah. how it was back in India. So back in India, at least for us, when uh, we pursued our degree from Pune University, yeah. So the marking was like you had to give a midterm exam, you had to give a final exam. I think yeah. Uh, like all of your marks were pretty much you know divided between these two exams. But over here, one thing that I've noticed that your marks are divided in multiple different domains. Yeah. Right? Say for example, if I have to take an example of my database course. So 10% of the grade is, uh, you know, associated with my course participation, my attendance, you know, how proactive I'm in class, etc. Yeah. 15% is dedicated to assignments, you know, 20% to midterms, 20% to finals, and the rest of the marks to my project. Got and it. as you see, you learn from different variety, you learn from different sources. Yeah. And that is how I think, I believe that you understand how these things work. Yeah. And as you mentioned about projects. So for my, uh, if I have to take an example for this too, so regarding, so for my database courses, I have to create a full stack application right from the scratch, so like essentially generating a database myself, you know, writing in that database, creating a backend, creating a front end for the application, hosting it live, you know, checking all the marks, checking all the requirements, hosting it, you know, surveying it completely. And, you know, these yeah. things, I believe that uh, does help me or did help me a lot during my time over here. So like, as soon as I complete these uh, courses or as soon as I complete these projects, 
Uh, you can also add these projects in your resume. I'd say exactly. so I added these projects in my resume, and I pre received pretty good responses yeah. from recruiters, from people, you know, <clears throat> in general. To uh, amazing feedback from my professor. To shout out to all of them. Yeah. So yeah, I think I'd say that whenever you're working on these kind of projects, the projects that were given to me for these courses, yeah, I would say they were pretty much industry or corporate relevant. Got it. So that definitely did help me a lot. You know, yeah. sit down or to hunt for internships, etc. And I think yeah, that's that's about Got it. Got it. So like yeah, the point that I forgot uh, while I was talking about this point is like not every course is going to have an exam, not every course is going to have a project. So like it really depends on what professor is conducting that particular course and what that course is in the first place. So like like you said, like for a couple of courses you will have grading split between your class participation, your projects, your midterm, your end term. But for some projects, uh, for some courses, especially for us, we did not have a theory exam and all of that. We actually had like project to like sort of submit and that was the like the entire grade. So like, one of the things that people also have asked me a lot about is what do they need to do after like completing their undergrad and before coming to the US? Like what are the things that they can work on in those three to four months apart from the on-campus job stuff that we've talked about in the previous video to sort of really help them, you know, sort of align to the courses even before they come to the States. So I'd say that start perfecting your resume from the moment that you know you're coming to the States to pursue your master's yeah. or your any other degree for that matter. Yeah. You know, because uh, one thing or the one uh, thing that I wish I would have started earlier to start it, you know, earlier to work on is yeah. perfecting my resume because right. I think you cannot just have a perfect resume by just editing it once. Mm -hmm. You need to iterate over it at least like say 10, 15, 20 times. So personally for me, I've worked on my resume at least 20 to 25 times. So like, okay, there, there have been Before multiple. Coming here? No, not after, after that's after, 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 yeah, yeah. after coming over here. But that's the thing. I mean, as as and now you start working on it, iterating on your resume, you start learning about all these things. And I think that is what makes a huge difference. And one more uh, thing or one more aspect that I'd say I wish I would have started early on is the technical side of things. As Got you it. like, if I have to say, for example, if you're uh, aspiring to work as a software developer, yeah, as a machine learning engineer, data scientist, etc., all these technical roles, you need to have a fundamentals pretty, you know, like at the, at the forefront of your fingertips, I'd say, you know, be it lead code, be it Kaggle, yeah. be it working on side projects, you know, be it perfecting your resume, your cover letter, you need to have these done like from the get go. And I would say that uh, before coming to the States, I think you have a pretty decent, decent amount, amount of time, time yeah. to work on these things because <clears throat> there are multiple things when you come over here as an international student, you know, you have to look after your and you have to look after the household you have to cook for yourself yeah you, you have, have to, to acclimatize to this country if exactly, you're like, if you're yeah. coming here for the first time and i think it's a lot of like work, exactly. mental work yeah exactly yeah. the mental stress <clears throat> over that we have is yep. genuinely very you know it's it's crazy it's a lot. It's, yeah it's a, it's a lot over here so i think that starting working on your resume working on the technical things your technical yeah. knowledge even your soft skills for that matter because soft skills do matter exactly. a lot i was here. going to bring this up yeah. so like tell us about the aspect of soft skills like how does it help especially the people in tech and why should they brush it up Right. So I think soft skills is one that uh, was not a lot or it was not, you know, we were not acclimatized to it back in India because it yeah. was not that totally. you know, complete or it was not useful or we basically did not, you know, get used to all that, that stuff. But after coming to the States, I believe that soft skills is one thing that many students uh, lack. Do, do lack. Yeah, I mean, yeah. even you have the technical exposure, even if you know the technical aspects, you totally. can you know, go wrong with soft skills because like, I, yeah, yeah. I mean, I had uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt, but yeah. I had something to add. Like the the other difference is like back in India, you had a placement cell in the yeah. college itself. So like where companies would come and you would give an interview, give the test, and then you know you would get a job. But here, I think it's it's not the case at all. Exactly. So like you have to cold email people, you have to ask for referrals, you have to you know be expert at sort of like using LinkedIn and stuff. So I think these aspects of communication, like how to draft a cold message, how to draft a cold mail, how to send an invite, how to schedule a meeting, how exactly. to chat. I think network, all of these networking, yeah, networking, networking way, and then yeah. yeah, all of these stuff, uh, like things around communication do really help, right? They do help a lot, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and I wish I would have known these things earlier. So yeah. that's what, again, so like you exactly. need to start working on these things as soon as you yeah. know that you're going to pursue your master's or your, you know, yeah. start connecting with your college alumni, start connecting with people you have some common ground with, start connecting with your undergrad college alumni who are present who are in present the States. Yeah. Like there are multiple ways to exactly. start connecting with people. I think yeah. another thing you can do that when you are back in India, I think that just creates, that just, you can just create an entire network and you can leverage it after coming, after coming here. Already. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, in my case, like we've talked about on-campus job, having that network in place before coming here, like does really help. Definitely. I think it just gives you a familiarity of the things that are sort of lined up for you here. Like even if it's not necessarily NYU, the fact that you're in the States, I think 
does really it open, it opens up yeah. many possibilities exactly. exactly yes so i think this is pretty much it anything that you want to add any advice in general for like the juniors who are coming here in 2025 especially i think i'd say i mean i think this is one of the most common <laughs> messages that i get on linkedin that is the job market cooked <laughs> <laughs> I'd say yes. I mean, it is. It is not the. It is not the, not best. the best. It is yeah. not the best as of now. But that doesn't mean that you know that that shouldn't stop you. Essentially, I mean, I still know people who are getting you know good jobs, who are getting good internships at reputable firms, reputable companies. Exactly. It's just that how you network properly, how you can leverage all of the connections, you know, how you can. Gen- basically, how you can sell yourself in a very good way. Good way. Yeah. Even if I think I've already mentioned this one of it in one of your podcasts. Yeah. Yeah. That even if you have a mediocre profile. You should know how to network and how should how you should sell yourself exactly. in a better way. If you exactly. can sell yourself in a better way, I think the you sky can, is the limit. Yeah, yeah, the sky is the limit. Yourself. Exactly. So yeah. I think yeah, that's that's what I'd like to say. And yeah, just put your legs everywhere. Try to you know uh, acknowledge or try to get familiarized with anything that is possible. And yeah. you never know if something can work well for you. Something can work well for me. Yeah. But I'd say that you know don't be demoralized with what you are reading on Reddit. You're reading on LinkedIn, <laughs> etc. I mean, it is tough, but it's not yeah. impossible. That's the what I like to say. Exactly. So I think this is pretty much it. Like we have another video with him about on-campus jobs that we've created about two, three weeks ago, which you can definitely check out. I've linked his, uh, you know, profile in the description, LinkedIn profile. So like, if you have any questions, you can definitely direct them along his way. And let me know if we both can help in any other way possible. I think more than happy to do so. That's okay. it. Thank you so yeah. much for tuning into the video. Bye bye. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Zale, I mean, don't videos sir.